Bloody hell, are we still doing these? Watch us wreck the mic. Psych! Yes, let's get ready to rumble with another loot crate. It's a box of stuff what they sent me. I'm going to open it up now and show you what's in it. And that, dear friends, is how these videos go. Right, um, so I don't think I've got one last month, or maybe this is last month's one delayed. I don't know. I have frankly completely lost track of these things. But I'll tell you what, it has got a very old-fashioned TV box thing going on, so that's quite pleasing, isn't it? What's the t-shirt this month? It is! Oh my goodness, it is Back to the Future, and like Doc Brown's sketches of all the parts of the time machine, presuming he can do really, really good drawings of a DeLorean, and, you know, the flux capacitor, and all that cool stuff. And there's the dates on it. That's quite a nice t-shirt. Quite like that. I'm not a massive fan of this sort of grey and white stipple stuff, but it's not bad because I like a bit of Back to the Future, and it's better than just the logo in it. Oh, the pin is on top. It is the ship from Gallagher. Oh, that's cool. Right, pleased with that. No Loot Crate logos or guffs. It is just the ship from Gallagher. Right, happy with that. This is good so far. And I can already see, as I imagine you can, there's a bloody great Sonic the Hedgehog thing in here. Let's get that out now. Whoop. Do 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 is some of the musics. Right. <clears throat> Let's have a look. This is an exclu crate exclusive. Cable of travelling at the speed of sound. Jesus, wouldn't he like explode or something? Sonic is known for his speed. Capable of travelling at the speed of sound. Sonic is known for his speed. Well, that, that does make sense. Also makes sense as to why it's called Sonic. Confident attitude and readiness for any and all types of adventure. A true hero, he calls upon his skills to save the world from moustache Phil. Sonic has a big heart and is always ready to help those in need. And his enlarged heart is sadly what will eventually kill him. Right, um... Damage the old uh, soil tape there and see what it's like. Ooh, it's a little old thing. Right, oh right, I'm seeing how this goes. So we've got a green... Oh no, no, it's the proper Green Hill Zone base, or whatever the hell they called the uh, equivalent in Sonic 2. Here is Sonic himself. He's uh, looking strangely wide-headed there. The paint's a bit patchy as well. Hmm. Um, right, he fits on there like that. And he's got two golden rings, which he likes to shove in his mouth. I think that's how it works. He eats them, doesn't he? Where else do they go? Oh, wait, because they'll fall out of him when somebody hits them, because he shits himself in terror. There's a thought you'll never get out of your head. Well, there we are. That's not a bad thing, really. Um, not entirely... Yeah, his head looks a bit wide from the side. I think it's a bit more round as opposed to oblong. And some of the paint's a little bit squiff. But other than that, that's quite a nice thing. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, would I say it's my best Sonic collectible? I don't know. I've still got that massive um, Sonic standing on a Mega Drive that came with Sonic Mania for the Switch. So I'm not entirely sure. But this is not at all bad. Yep, that's better than it's been recently. It's better than something with a giant head shaped like a loaf of bread or something, isn't it? Right, next up... Red Dragon Die Keeper. Is that German for the Keeper? The most covetous of the true dragons, Red Dragons, tirelessly seek to increase their treasure hoards. The bastards. They are exceptionally vain. They're so vain, they probably think this song is about them. You knew that was coming, didn't you? Even for dragons, and their conceit is reflected in their proud bearing and their disdain for other creatures. They sound like a right bunch of shits. Sorry if I want one of them guiding my dice. Oh well, let's open it up and see what it's like. Oh, it comes with a die. Um, so it's a die keeper. It keeps it... Oh, great. Never find that again. Oh no, wait. I did. Um, so that, by the looks of it, is a 20-sided die. And that is a small plastic dragon. There's a lot of detail on it. And there's not much paint. There's a bit of sort of wash going on on it. And the eyes are in there. But what is on there is well done. Give me a bit of a zoom in there. Morning. And I'll close the dice because nothing like that. Oh yeah, look. Oh, that's quite sweet in its way. Only a little old thing, but it's very nicely made. I'm very pleased with this box so far. It is a good one. Right, for oh, last thing by the looks of it. You don't get much of them these days, but I don't care if you get less items as long as they're not as crap. Woohoo! 25 years keychains! I'm guessing... Yeah, I'm guessing Simpsons. I could have just read it on the top. Kid Robot, The Simpsons Keychains. Well, what can we get? We could have... Oh my god. Bobo, The Settee, or The Couch, do they call it? I forget. Buzz Cola, A Squishy, Bart Skateboard, The Head of Jebediah Springfield Statue. Is that Homer's Bat? Yes, Homer's Special Bat that he carved or whatever. And... Mm, you're right. Is that the Inanimate Carbon Rod? 
because they've added kind of a logo onto it. I don't think it had a logo, did it? Hmm. Duff Beer, uh, Homer's lovely gift to Marge, a bowling ball with his own name on it. Blinky the Three-Eyed Fish, Lisa's saxophone, the Flying Hellfish logo, Maggie's dummy or pacifier or whatever they call it, um, Bart's catapult or slingshot, and a harshly eaten donut. Right, which one of these keychains would I like? I don't particularly care, frankly. I don't think sure I'll be using any of them, but let's open it up and see what the quality's like. This may take a few weeks. Um, you know, feel free to go off and, you know, start a family and stuff, and we'll come back. It's ah! my noise. Oh, it's in the thing. It's not in the thing anymore. It's a squishy. Squish, squish, squishy. Yeah, it's not very exciting, actually, is it? That's, that's probably one of the more generic ones, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's solidly made. I'm not entirely sure about the sort of weird gradients of uh, paint on there. Well, that's a thing, isn't it? That, that is the weakest of the bunch, I feel, but it was a very good bunch. And, oh, you don't get the booklet anymore. Look, you just get an advert for a Vive. Oh, no. no, no, you could win an HTC Vive VR system valued at $600. And bloody good fun it is too. Right, um, blah, 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 blah. Yep, we've got all of it. Well, that's a bit more of a return to form for the old old loot crate. Plus, I can actually use that box to keep things in, because it looks like an old television. That fits in with the aesthetic of the room. Very, very nice. Right. Time for a jump cut to the next one. And... Boosh! Who remembers these, then? It's from the retro.co.uk, the Retro Store box. Yes, I've done these many, many months ago. I can't remember how long ago, but I haven't seen one for bloody ages. It was all old video games and stuff, if I recall correctly. And indeed, there is a letter. Hey, Stuart, it's been a while. We hope you're well, and we'd love to get your thoughts in the box over a year since our last. Since then, we've moved into an office, ooh, uh, lured, and worked out how to... We've moved into an office and lured? Who have you lured into your office? What, what does this actually say? We've moved into an office, hired, and worked out how to pack lots of boxes without horrible delays. So by hired, you mean extra stuff. Right, I'm with you now. I was slightly worried you were luring people into your gingerbread house in order to eat them. Our boxes are typically all catered to a customer's own preferences, so we've given you a classic mix-em-up. Oh, thanks. Keen to hear what you think? Peter, Leo and James. Thank you, Peter and Leo and also James, with an exclamation mark. Right, I've been quite looking forward to this one. Um, I have opened the box, as you can see, and inside, rather pleasingly, was a drumstick, one of uh, nature's best devices for removing... Fillings from your teeth, really. Um, there was also a full-size Wham bar and a full-size Vimto bar, but I've already eaten those. Right, <clears throat> they've now got rather nice bags. Look, your goodies have arrived. Oh, amazing Spider-Man. Bruce Springsteen tape and Joan Armour trading, an autobiography. Well, that's something I didn't expect. Right, I'm going to rip this open. Oh, this hasn't ripped that well. Ah, there we are. Oh, there's a PS2 game, certainly. And, oh my goodness, right, well, let's start with the PS2 game and work our way out. Ooh, I made a bit of a mess of that. Right, it's Enter the Bloody Matrix. Well, that's one of those games you can get on Amazon for about a 1p or something. Um, yeah, so if you don't remember this, you've probably heard of the Matrix films. This was like a bridge between the first film and the second film, which was the Matrix uh, Reloaded. Uh, there was kind of this uh, series of cartoons called the Animatrix, and that then fed into this. I think one of the Animatrix cartoons, the plot of it directly feeds into this, and this feeds into the plot of the Matrix Reloaded. It's all a bit of a uh, weird thing. They had this kind of of whole set of um, multimedia stuff going on. A bit like Shadows of the Empire, if you remember that, but um, yeah, it's odd, because that means there's like bits that just kind of happen in the uh, Matrix Reloaded, because you know, it's just sort of, well, that happened off camera, because it actually happened in this game, and yeah. Don't know if that was a good way to do it or not, but I'll tell you what, the game went very good. Um, it's, you had Kung Fu bits, and you had Shooty Shooty bits, and you also had, oh yeah, exclusive footage. Because um, Matrix Revolutions and Reloaded were filmed back to back, if I remember, and they just filmed some extra stuff that's only available in the game. In the water save Zion. What part will you play? I will play the part of Bottom, the hilarious oaf, who at one stage has the head of a donkey. No, wait, that's a Midsummer Night's Dream. Yeah, it's um, it an unparalleled film collaboration. Yeah, but it just wasn't that great a game, to be honest. 
uh, it was a bit of a disappointment at the time because we were quite excited about all this sort of uh, multimedia coming together and frankly it didn't work out on any level but there we are it's got a bloody thick manual what more do you want out of life right next up I'm gonna look at the uh, SNES game it's bloody Dragon's Lair wow Sullivan Bluth presents Dragon's Lair so um, you're probably aware of Dragon's Lair the old um, Laserdisc arcade game where you just sort of watched a cartoon and occasionally pushed a direction and didn't die if you were lucky well um, this isn't a Super Nintendo game based on it but it's a platformer you have uh, control of Dirk the Daring there and you just run around and do very you know Super Nintendo platformery stuff really um, it wasn't very good at all if I remember if I remember it was a bit shite but it is noticeably superior to the um, NES version there was a NES Dragon's Lair and it's like absolutely abysmal like truly terrible one of the worst games arguably for the nintendo entertainment system so the super one's considerably better than that but it's still pretty shite and finally ah uh, yes i did spot this earlier pokemon emerald now this is by far the best game out of these by a country mile frankly um yeah when was this been released because it's game boy advance mid 2000s yeah, yeah, I'm going to guess at, I don't know, 2004, 2005, 2006. Let's say 2005 and split the difference and probably be wrong. There's not a date on it, actually. That's annoying. Yeah, this is really good, by all accounts. I don't know. I'm not a Pokemon's man myself, so I've never played it. But um, from what I recall, this is like an enhanced version of, oh, the ones that came before it, Ruby and Sapphire. I don't know how it's enhanced. Um, it just had extra stuff, I think, like more Pokemon or something. I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's meant to be a good one. Well, there's certainly three games. Um, yeah, that's not very good. That's pretty bad. That's great, apparently. And yeah, I don't know the value of those two. There might be a bit of value to that. But there's certainly no value whatsoever to that one. Right, next box. Geeky tea bag. It's a bag with t-shirts in and they're quite geeky. Do you see how that works, everyone? I'm sure you've seen it before. Basically, they send you two, two t-shirts every month, is my understanding. Got to try and guess what they're going to be this month. Uh, the, um, yeah, the obvious is Infinity War, isn't it? The, that's surely it's got to be Infinity War. It could be something to do with Solo. They could mix... No, they never mix it up, actually. They are always um, two based on the same thing, to my knowledge, or something that I remember. And usually there's like one based on the film version, something, one based on the comic version of something. Unless it's something like Star Wars where there kind of are only films officially. Well, let's have a look. I'm guessing Infinity War. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, don't spoil it. We want to look at the T-shirts. Yep, a big Avengers logo with a load of um, crackly lightning on it. Because the Avengers are getting all fucked up in the new movie or something. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. It only came out like yesterday or something. Um... Yeah, that's all right, isn't it? Big Avengers logo, nice soft black t-shirt, nothing wrong with that. And uh, Thanos himself, or oh, it's movie Thanos, as, per se, um, as played by Josh Brolin, 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 who is also Cable in the Marvel Universe. He plays a lot of men in the Marvel films. Yep, there he is, looking all purple and chinned up and that. And he's got the old Infinity Gauntlet with lots of the Infinity Gems in. That's a bad thing. If you've ever played the video game, you'll know that. Wish he had his hat on. Bald Thanos is a bit odd from the film for me, but uh, there we are. That's a thing. Another decent t-shirt. Well, if you need a couple of Infinity War t-shirts, you know where to go. Probably anywhere, because I imagine it's going to be like the most popular thing on a t-shirt ever. Jump cut. Here's a bit of a different thing. I think we've only done these once before. Geek Gear pins. They are pins from the Geek Gear people. They're kind of custom, quite large uh, metal uh, pin badges that you can, you know, stick on things and that. And uh, they're kind of based around popular franchises but look suspiciously unlicensed, which is always interesting. Anyway, what have we got? We've got ooh, something with an old arcade in it. It's literally an old arcade machine with Ready Player Run written on it and like different coloured keys because, you know, that's what they got to get in that book and that film and all that stuff. Hmm. That's a bit uh, plain. Oh, yes, and you, get, you always get three different editions. Sometimes they're just like original silver and gold. I'm going to presume that one's original, which is a good thing because imagine the silver and gold wouldn't look as good because the black on it is kind of quite important, isn't it? Um, and sometimes they're different pins entirely, if I recall. 
That is a very large pin. And mm, it's, it's a bit overly simple, boxy kind of arcade cabinet. It literally just says Ready Player One on it. Not particularly enthused by that one, personally, but there we are. It's got all the movie stuff around it. But it was a book first, wasn't it? Oh, now that's interesting. And three hearts. Three very suspiciously Nintendo hearts, I would have said, from a certain Zelda place. You can get the original, we've got three. Rare, we've lost one, and ultra rare, we've only got one life left. <laughs> That's absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, I like, I like that a lot. That looked nice on the strap of a bag or something, wouldn't it? Right, that's much better. Now, oh God, I've seen the back of this, and I can't quite tell what's going on. Mind, original, time, rare, space, ultra rare. Oh, my God, they're supposed to be the infinity gem. Oh, come on, guys. Oh, I got the ultra rare as well. What? It, it it just looks like a, a cloud of a lump of Play-Doh or something. The other Infinity Gems are like round or like, you know, some sort of shape, aren't they? I mean, you'd never know that was It's just a dark blue mass of nothing. What a bizarre design. Who the hell would want that? I haven't... I haven't yeah, oh, bloody hell, guys. Uh, and this one's somewhat more... Um, Noticeable. Oh, we've got the hero. We've got the rare one again. The hero edition. Basically, the different versions of Cartman from South Park. You've got original wizard edition and hero. So that's from uh, the first game, isn't it? Um, Stick of Truth. And that's from the second game, which was the Fractured Butt Hole. <laughs> See what they did there. Well, that's that's a thing, isn't it? It's, it's Cartman as the... I can't even remember the name of the character, but it's like a Wolverine raccoon hybrid thing, isn't it? Well, that's like noticeable what it is, and if you like the character, that's actually a very good pin. S not particularly impressed by that, and I, frankly, I don't know what the hell was going through their heads when they thought they'd do this. I mean, that's that's just the most. It's like a dark blue fart cloud or something. No idea whatsoever. Ah, oh, well, and that's the. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, hey, hey, guys, do you remember? This film what I was in a while ago called The Darkest Dawn, where I play a right bastard. Well, if you didn't get it on DVD, you can now watch it, actually, in HD on Netflix. Yep, it is on Netflix, along with its uh, the film that came before it, which is called Hungerford, if you are a completist and wish to watch them in order. But if not, they do. This one does stand on its own, as well as a sequel. Um, yeah, just go on Netflix and look for it. Unless you're in America, it is not on Netflix in America yet, but I believe it is in most other countries and it's certainly available in the UK. So there we are. If you've got an hour and a half or so and you wish to watch something on Netflix that's got a bit of uh, a bit of enjoyment and a bit of go and a bit of action and a bit of creepiness. There I am, look. Rrr, I am a creepy man. I I'm going to be honest, I didn't play the character like that on screen. I don't think that would have gone down well. But yeah, um, that is on Netflix. Tell you what, I'm going to leave you with a trailer of it and then you can go off and watch it if you like. Why not? Go on then, turn it on. Hey! Is it what you wanted? Oh, Mum, it's perfect. <laughs> my name is Chloe Murdoch. I'm reporting live from my living room with my mad, beautiful, stupid family. <laughs> Happy, Happy birthday! Dad's... Dad's not here. Midas, I love you. What was that? Hello? We're looking for someone. What was her name? Philippa. Philippa Martel. Our plan is to take the Thames out of the city. 
We know where she's gonna be in two days' time. Guys, stop! Why is someone still alive? How could anyone have survived that? 